Hello and welcome to the Columbia Daily Tribune's Courtside View basketball webcast. This is Tribune Sports Editor Joe Wall Jasper along with Tribune basketball beat writer Steve Walentic. Steve, uh, I guess to begin with, Missouri begins last week by losing at Georgia um, convincingly. Uh, as it's a little bit of a departure from what we had seen before in that it was really their offense couldn't get anything done and mm -hmm. struggled for long periods of time to score any points. But for the second straight road game, the topic came up of, of Missouri's effort. The first time at Alabama, Frank Haith brings it up. After the Georgia game, he says he thought their effort was fine, but I think others, including the announcers on ESPN, uh, questioned it. Um, Certainly when you get down 24, yeah. you, you, it's hard to argue that you're playing hard. But Okay, well, I, I was wondering, what was your perspective? You were there. Did you feel I, like it was an effort issue? I, I thought, to some degree, absolutely. I mean, you, you can, you know, you can cite a rebounding advantage as, as evidence of playing hard, but if, if the game's, you know, a 12 point game the whole second half uh, and, until the end, and, and Missouri never did anything to really make a run to, to get it closer, and then all of a sudden it ends up, you know, 24 in the last couple minutes, um, and, you know, then they finally, like, go on a little rally and, and cut it to 15. I, 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 I thought the entire team looked lifeless. They were playing in a lifeless arena. Um, didn't seem to have any urgency. Um, you know, obviously offense was the bigger issue, but it, it wasn't like the defense was good against Georgia. This is a Georgia team that's last in the SEC in, in field goal percentage. They shot 52% against Missouri. Um, I thought Missouri gave up a, a lot of transition opportunities, which you could argue that's effort not getting back uh, on defense. I, I, I continue to think that Missouri struggles um, with this zone that it keeps playing because it's 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 far too passive and uh, it seemed like Georgia was able to work clock quite a bit uh, and then get a good shot at the end of it and that's not just necessarily an effort thing but it, it is a problem that Missouri is continuing to face and uh, yeah I, I think in both those games at Alabama and, and Georgia I, I, didn't, I didn't see the intensity that I'd seen in, in other outings for sure. I guess when I was watching that Georgia game just on TV, it didn't jump out and grab me that they were not giving good effort. It, just, it jumped out and grabbed me that they were, they were playing terrible offense. I think they got very frustrated, um, and it seemed like a lot a lot more than usual. You saw Clarkson and Jabari Brown just try to make something out of nothing, which I guess sort of makes sense the way the game is officiating now, but it seemed like they were just kind of barreling into the lane with nowhere to go um, and weren't getting but you know, out. you could argue that that's an effort thing. Well, that's too, a because, mental toughness because, thing. Because yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's not a physical effort thing, but obviously, I, I don't think Missouri showed a, a lot of resolve mm -hmm. uh, throughout that game, and, and that was one of the reasons they never did really make any sort of charge until you know it was far too late in the last two minutes. Okay, then they come back. They beat Mississippi State soundly at home. Now Mississippi State bad in the first place. Um, they had lost 10 in a row, I believe. And then they were also without their probably their best player, Craig Sword, and Craig um, Sword, who was attending his grandmother's funeral. So that was a really, I don't know how much you want to take from that game, but if you want to take a positive from it, um, it was a play of the big men, especially Keanu Post. Um, I think their big men went 15 for 16 from the field. Um, I don't know how much you think that's just, well, that was Mississippi State and that was an aberration, or do you, have you seen anything in the games of some of these big guys that make you think that they're starting to come around a little bit? Well, I'd say with, with Keanu Post, regardless of the opponent, for him, for him to do what he did on Saturday, I, I mean, is at least a little bit of a positive in my mm -hmm. mind because I didn't think he was capable of doing that against anybody the way we saw him struggle uh, a lot early in the year. I, I do think he's looked a little bit more comfortable. And, Certainly Saturday still, to me, you know, came as a complete surprise. Uh, but he did look like he had, you know, a reasonable amount of skill and, um, you know, was moving pretty well and, and, and made some plays. You know, that tip in right before half was a big play. And uh, I think you have to athletically make a play there and also instinctively make a play there to, to tip the ball in like he did. Uh, you know, he, he showed off a couple of post moves. Uh, so, so you know, there's, there's something there that I, I would say is a positive. But if... if you're asking me in general, do I think that because we saw them score, you know, the big men combined for 32 points on on Saturday, do I think we're going to start seeing better games out of them again? I'm going to take a wait-and-see approach because it was only about two weeks ago that, uh, you know, those guys had a pretty de decent game against Tennessee uh, combined for mm -hmm. 29 points, uh, shot the ball, I think, uh, 11 for 14, 
and had 14 rebounds against a much better Tennessee front line. And then, you know, the next three games after that, they come out and average half of that, you know, 14 mm -hmm. points total. So um, these guys have not been consistent all year. I don't know that there's any reason, certainly not based on playing, you know, the number 228 RPI team in the country, to think that they've all of a sudden flipped a switch and are, and are going to come on strong here down the stretch. That's one of those games where even though you win, I think your RPI – it doesn't improve. It may even go down. It did, it, did, yeah. it did go down, um, I think, four places from 48 to 52. Okay, so they're, depending on who your pr preferred bracketologist is, Missouri is either one of the second four out of the tournament, that's what Joe Lenardi says, or still somehow in the tournament if you want to go with CBS's Jerry Palm. Um, so with two games left, Excuse me. Where do you think they? What do you think they have to do now to make the tournament? How many games do they have to win if you're including the SEC tournament? Well, I, I think it. First of all, let's let's say that they have to beat Texas A&M on mm -hmm. Wednesday, regardless. Uh, I don't I don't think you can afford in their position another, uh, you know, loss to a, a sub 100 RPI team, uh, especially at home and and like your chances. I I think if if they win that game and could find a way to win at Tennessee, a team that they've already beaten, although, you know, close game. Um, you know, I, I think they'd actually be in an okay position. They That would leave them at 10-8 and eight in conference play, which, you know, we've talked all year about. We thought 11-7 and seven was the magic number, but as we've gotten closer and closer to this thing, 10-8 and eight seems like mm -hmm. it would be more acceptable. Uh, Tennessee would be, at least at, at the moment, another top 50 win, which Missouri has one of against UCLA. Mm -hmm. uh, Tennessee's clinging barely to the top 50, but they're 48. Uh, so that would help the resume be another road win, another win away from Mizzou Arena, which would help the resume. Uh, so if they do that, I, I think they could you know, be in a, a pretty good spot winning one or two games in the tournament after that. Um, and, and I think they would get in. I think if they lose to Tennessee, they almost have to win the tournament um, to get in, um, at least probably make it to the finals and, and hope that they can, you know, knock off a Kentucky or a Florida or something in, on the way there. Although even beating Kentucky right now, I, I don't know that that's a, right. a win that jumps out at you. So short of beating Florida, there's no win that, you know, completely changes the perception uh, of, of what you are as, as a team. And, and so I, I think that's, that's why Missouri is in, in such a difficult position. Yeah, well, I think the, the big game, obviously, as you mentioned, is looming at Tennessee. That if, if they were to win that game, we would probably be sitting here next week at this time with a little different perspective on what Missouri's season is, even because that's the kind of game they simply haven't won. The closest you could say that to that game maybe would be winning at Arkansas, which was something mm -hmm. that surprised us. And, Looking more impressive all the time as Arkansas is playing itself into a tournament contender. So, but also that you know, as as you mentioned, Arkansas is turning itself into a, a tournament contender. That's that's another team that that seems to be playing its way into the tournament. Not a team that has struggled as much as Missouri mm -hmm. has down the stretch. And I, I think you know that that's something the committee looks at. How do you do your last twelve games? Missouri hasn't looked that good. You know, they had that three game winning streak, but those those wins all at home were, mm -hmm. and not necessarily against. You know, elite teams were, were all by a combined nine points, mm -hmm. and then they go and they lose to a bad Alabama team. They they lay an egg at, at Georgia. Uh, you know, the, that Arkansas win was their last road win, and um, before that, their last road win was their SEC opener, uh, road opener at, at Auburn. So uh, they've not been not been a, a real good road neutral team, and as I said, they don't really have a whole lot of quality wins. Arkansas has beaten Kentucky twice. You know, Missouri can't say they've done anything close to that. And Tennessee's obviously beat Virginia, beating mm -hmm. them badly. So, mm -hmm. I mean, the, that's what Missouri really is lacking is a quality. Mm -hmm. All right, well, tune in next Monday when we will discuss the finish of the regular season and look ahead to the SEC tournament.